In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can set up your own GPT actions where you'll be able to integrate information from your endpoint. I'll show you how to map that schema to your endpoint and spin up a quick example to get you started with how this works. So GPTs, if you're not familiar, so GPTs were just released during OpenAI's dev day. And essentially what there are, they're like a customizable version of ChatGPT. So say if you wanna make a specific chatbot to a specific feature or implementation or an idea that you have, you can go ahead and generate that. So there's a handful of examples here like creative writing coach, laundry buddy, game time. In this example, I'll show you a sort of rudimentary and starter example for something like a financial analyst. Now this is gonna be a very crude example, but it's going to get you hopefully going and showing you sort of the core components to get started with this. So if you have uh, access to the new GPT editor, go ahead within the editor, create a new GPT, and we're gonna start this completely from scratch here. So once you have uh, gone into here, what we're going to be doing is essentially setting up a basic endpoint. So we're going to be querying for some stock data. So all of this is things like the opening, closing, price of Apple stock data, we'll be able to pass in any ticker. And what we're going to be doing to be able to interact with our local host is we're going to essentially be putting something called ngrok in front of it. So this will allow us to essentially serve our local host to make that local development a lot easier. So instead of continually having to push something to like Vercel or AWS, if you're using Lambda or something like that, this will allow you to essentially develop locally but have the nicety of having a server that you can actually query. So both of these services and what I'm gonna show you in the example, you will be able to access for free. Uh, there are free tiers that are quite generous for both of them. So for an example like this, you will be able to get up and running. So. Without further ado, so head over to the NGROC site. If you don't have an account already, go ahead and make one and also go to polygon.io and create um, a, an account. So also, if you don't wanna make accounts for this, you'll get sort of the general sense on how to set this up. So I'm gonna be setting this up in Bun or Node.js. So for JavaScript developers, this is sort of the, the focus here. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be lots of Python content on something similar. Now, the thing with this is, what I'm not gonna show you in this video is if you actually wanna deploy this, you could use something like I mentioned Vercel or serverless is really good for deploying Lambda functions on AWS, but it should be very simple to deploy what I'm gonna show you and all of the code I'm gonna have within the description of the video where you can link out to the GitHub and pull it down and use whatever you want uh, from it. So um, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just going to open up a new directory and I use bun init dash y to start all of my projects. So this will allow you just to have a simple uh, index.ts. It will have the, the sort of base uh, boilerplate for starting your project. So once you have that installed, we're going to have one dependency. So we're going to bun install express. So we're gonna be using Express for our server. I know we could use Bun directly, but I think Express is probably more familiar to most people on the channel. So once we have that, you will need to put in your API key from Polygon. So once you've made an account, just go to this settings page, I believe it is, or your account page, plug in your API key, just like you see here. And then essentially what we're going to be doing is uh, two parts mainly. So within our interface, uh, we're going to go ahead and generate some of it. So I'm gonna say, I want you to be a financial analyst chatbot. And let's just start with that. It can sort of run in the background as I'm running through some other things. It will start to sort of generate the base boilerplate for our chatbot here, and then we'll go in and set up our API. So within your index.ts, you can go ahead and open that up. I have a handful of comments here just running through a, the basic example of plugging this all in. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to import Express, um, and then from there, we're just gonna initialize Express. We're gonna set the port to 8080. You feel free to set this to whatever you want though. Then we're just going to have the endpoint be the base, um, route us. Uh, so we're not going to, you could put it like something like slash whatever, but in this case, we're just going to leave it as the base URL. So here we're going to extract the query. So th this symbol is going to be what we're going to map within the schema of our GPT action. So this is going to be what gets passed hopefully as a payload to our endpoint. 
So we're just going to do a little bit of error handling to make sure that a symbol was actually sent. Otherwise, it's just going to send that message back to the GPT and let, let it know that a symbol is required. So here we're just going to reference our API key. If you're using something like bun, you don't need to install .env. If you're using node, just make sure to install something like .env and set that up to be able to access your API key. So here we're just going to specify the current date. And the reason that we're doing this is we're essentially going to get the last three months. Now, the reason that I picked the last three months is it's approximately 3000 tokens. So I believe it's around 4000 tokens within the offering that you can pass in within the chatbot each time. So for instance, if you tried to get a year of data, which I did try in setting up this video, that context it length is going to be too long. So that's why I put three, three months. It sort of gives you about 3000 tokens. So it gives you enough for your message and the data that's being sent. So you're sort of, you sort of have a safe margin there with three months. So then we're just going to format the date uh, for what Polygon accepts for the date range here. So see, we have three months ago and then we have the current date, we have the symbol that we're passing in and then we're gonna be passing in the API key. So the other thing with Polygon, there's a number of different endpoints that you can interact with. So say if you don't just want historical data, there's a number of different metrics that you can get from their API, both at free tier, they also have some really good uh, professional tiers that I encourage you to check out if you're interested. So here we're just gonna wrap it within a try catch and then we're actually just gonna make a fetch request. So we're going to say, okay, if there's not a okay um, response, we're just going to go ahead and parse the data. And then we're going to check the data to make sure that there is a payload that has been sent back. So an instance where maybe it wouldn't send back a valid payload is in, um, you know, maybe you're passing in an invalid ticker or something like that. Then from there, we're just going to send that response right back to the GPT. So you could do things like if you want to parse it a little bit, maybe you only want certain values, maybe you want to be a bit more descriptive with the values, maybe you want to actually make the, the keys like volume and opening price and whatever, you could do that um, if you want to experiment it, uh, with it like that. But that's pretty much it. Then we're just going to catch any errors and then we're just going to listen for the port. So I'm going to go ahead and save that out and then you can just go ahead and bun index. So that will go ahead and start your server on the port 8080. So once you have ngrok set up, just go through their setup uh, steps and then you should be able to just run the ngrok HTTP 8080 command. So once you're all authenticated from your CLI, you can just go ahead and run that. And so that will essentially create this um, sort of mirrored version of your local host where you'll be able to access it. So I'll just go ahead and run that here. And the nice thing with it, so you both have a, a, a SSL certificate and then you have one without. So I'm just gonna use the one with the SSL. Now this screen I'm gonna uh, touch on for just a moment. So you can't just plug in the endpoint URL directly. You're going to have to take one of these steps. So I'm gonna show you the first uh, step here, the ngrok skip browser. That's what I found to just be the easiest, most straightforward. This will essentially allow you to bypass the screen. So if you just tried to directly uh, go ahead and ping this URL, is it will send back a payload of this page itself, which is no good for us, right? So we want that valid uh, JSON to come back just like this. So if we take this URL and if we just head over to configure for a sec. Now let's go back to actually, before we go into configure, let's just answer a couple questions here. We'll say, sure, that's financial guru is going to be the name. We also see that it generated some prompting questions for us. It has sort of the subtitle or, or title of the actual uh, bot here. And you can actually see all of the things that it generated for us just from that basic prompt. Uh, of setting it up. So in this, I'm gonna turn off web browsing and Dolly and in within the create action, that's where we're going to be doing most of the work here. So here we have a photo. Do you like it? Let's say yes. And we'll just sort of let that run in the background. So within our create action, 
Uh, we'll just ignore that. I'm sure that should hopefully be all right. Maybe I should wait for this to finish. Okay, so within our create action, there are some examples. So I'm going to be basing it off of this weather example here. So I have this exact example just within a JSON file on the left hand side here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using really close to the boilerplate. So you can start to tweak and build off this, but I wanted to keep the example very simple. So here, this is the weather endpoint. So this isn't a real endpoint. Weather.example.com does not exist. So if you try to query it, it's just going to error out. Now, essentially what I did is I just went through and swapped out all of the descriptions uh, for the things that you need, like the query parameter, what the actual function does, so that the GPT model has the context of how and when to invoke that GPT action. So you can sort of go in here, toy around with this. So in this, I just, I took sort of 30 seconds to run through this. So retrieve the past three months of stock data for a particular stock, get the last three months of stock data for a symbol, and then a valid symbol for a publicly listed company. So just to make sure that it's, uh, trying its best to give a valid symbol. So I haven't had it hallucinate yet, but you likely could if maybe you, you know, put in some made up company names or whatnot. So for our URL that we have here, um, you can go ahead and put it within like you see here and just make sure that there's not a slash or anything when you put it in. So I'm just going to make sure that this is the same endpoint that we have here. Okay, so once we click visit site, that should go away. Okay, so here we can just copy this portion. We're going to put it in here. It was slightly different from when I was testing this earlier. And then now once you have this, you can go ahead within your GPT action, you can paste in that schema. Now, if you go ahead and test this, I'll just show you the error. And the first thing that you'll have to do is if you're testing new endpoints, you will have to allow them. So I'll just go ahead and test it again here. So you can see the responses. So it is a little buggy. It's obviously still new. There's obviously a lot that have, has gone on at OpenAI recently. So I'd imagine this will improve pretty quickly over time. Uh, okay, even the responsiveness is a little bit broken. But if you look here, this is that response data. So that was that page that I showed you where it's this essentially. So to get around that, so here it says you can set and send the ngrok skip browser warning uh, with any value. Okay, so now once we copy this over, we're just going to go ahead and put that within the authentication tab. So I'll just highlight this here and copy that to my clipboard. I'll head back over here. So I'm just going to remove the slash here that I didn't remove on the previous screen before pasting it in here. And then I'm going to go within the authentication tab of the API key. So just go ahead and go to API key, then click custom, then put in that ngrok skip browser warning, and then you can put any value within the API key. So it specifies you can put any value there. It's just looking for that header name. So you can go ahead and, and test that. And then I can go ahead and say, what has Tesla stock done in the past couple months? So on the back end, what it's doing is it's taking that natural language query, it's looking to those GPT action schema descriptions and seeing if there's a match. So here it sees that the uh, request was for Tesla. It knows the uh, symbol or the ticker for this TSLA. And if we look at the response that was received, you can see all of that data that was being sent back from our endpoint. So here it's, it's telling you just some sort of high level information based on that data. So you can ask specifics. So you can say, be more specific with the values. Now I'd also encourage you 
instead of just taking the base generated boilerplate for the GPT, go in there, refine it, tweak it over time. Those are essentially system prompts that are weighted higher for when you go ahead and query it. So anything that you put in within the actual description of the GPT, it should be rated really weighted rather really high uh, in the responses that you get back. So here you sort of have a high level overview. Now, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show a really basic example on how you can get up and running. Now, obviously you don't have to use a financial endpoint. You can use your own endpoint of whatever you'd like um, or whatever you already have implemented. Um, you just have to get used to mapping that schema. Now, the other thing I'll mention is you can also set this up with a YAML file if you'd like. Um, but there's a lot of different flexibility there. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.